I, I, I want to talk about uh, 13 prints. I've done way, way more prints than that, but I want to narrow these this down to 13. And the first one I want to talk about is really kind of what the print that I think started it all of my era of a certain kind of prints. And it was called Cut Hand Hurt Eyes. Cut Hand Hurt Eyes was cut out of a, a piece of um, one inch thick plywood. It was um, a very good grade of, of plywood. And I cut it out with a mat knife, a, a box blade, and a couple of little chisels. And it was called Cut Hand Hurt Eyes. And it was about a character that had uh, knives, knives swirling around him, blades, uh, which I do. And then Hurt Eyes um, comes from cutting your hands. And I always had a sort of a, almost a phobia about cutting my hands, which I have cut before, by the way, not severely, but I have cut them. I made an addition of this with a with a woodblock hand rubbed printer, hand rubbing printer named Chip Elwell, who was a very, very, very good, masterful woodblock printer. Chip lived in New York. I worked with him out in Colorado at Anderson Ranch. And I cut this block in six hours in in total. It's three foot wide by about seven foot high. Um it was a major, major wood block, and I cut it with the ferocity of the knives themselves. Uh, and we trial proofed it in red, and we said, "Oh my God, the red works!" The it, everything worked with it; it just gelled and came together. Three days after we printed it, uh, did the proof. Chip died. He 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 died. Literally, he died. And. Uh, so I hand rubbed it down in Texas, and then that was in 18, I mean, I'm sorry, in 1986. And the edition sold out. Uh, and then in 1999, I did a second edition. This time I, I did it on a different paper. The first paper was Okawara paper like a Japanese kind of rice paper. Uh, and the second edition was on a th very much thicker paper, and it was a different colored red. So it was the second edition was not identical to the first edition, edition but the, the block was the same, but the printing method was different and the color was different. And I made it, I made, an edition, I think, of 15 was the total number of the second edition. I framed one and showed it in an exhibition in Dallas at the Meadows Museum. And a collector, a print collector who had bought one of the first edition, saw it, and he had a conniption. <coughs> Excuse me. He had a conniption fit because he said the second edition ruined his first edition. And I said, well, it's on different paper. It's a different color. And I called it the second edition. I didn't try to, I didn't try to say it was of the first edition. I mean, I, 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 I called it a second edition with a different number and everything. But that wouldn't satisfy him. He said I had to destroy the entire edition. So I said, well, you realize what you're asking me to do is to kill it. You're asking me to kill this edition of prints. He said, yes, that's exactly what you have to do. I said, well, my God, man, that's pretty severe. I said, what if I took it out to the woods and just shot it with a gun and killed it? He said, that's fine. I, I, would, I, would, I would be satisfied with that. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So I got a friend of mine who lives down near Lafayette uh, in Cecile, actually, uh, Louisiana. His name is David Bradshaw. 
David Bradshaw is kind of uh, what I would call a radical kind of a character, which most of my friends are by definition. And David is a national handgun champion. By that, I mean he is a target king. He can hit uh, a bullseye at 50 feet with a, with a handgun. So he came over. I put the edition all together, stacked them all up in just one in just right on top of each other on a piece of plywood and i told him to shoot it three times in the left hand three times in the right hand and then three times around the eyes once right between the eyes and then two uh right under each eye one right under each eye so he did he he used a 1912 um colt 45 military issue uh, handgun to an old gun and he he, he he was remarkable seeing this guy shoot this print um, but that's what those three white holes are in the face then the two hands those are bullet holes literally they are bullet holes from a 45 handgun um, I don't necessarily know that the collector liked the idea that I shot it and then kept it, but I did certainly kill that edition. I changed that edition uh, drastically because I put nine bullet holes through it. Uh, but that's a very important print and it kind of set the pace from 1986 through through the end of the um, uh, up. You know, up through the mid-90s. So there was like a six, seven-year period in there where I did a lot of wood cuts and linoleum cuts, and that's what I'm about to tell you about. The next print is called Wellwater. Wellwater is a, a linoleum cut. I would take a big piece of a linoleum. This is like maybe... God, it's huge. It's like 34, 5, 6 inches by 48 or 50 inches. And I would take the piece of linoleum out and lay it in the sun and let it heat up. And, and so the linoleum would get soft. And then I would draw on it with a knife, not a pencil, but literally with a with a sharp blade knife. And I would every line in this thing represents two cuts. You cut it diagonal to the left, and then you cut it again diagonal to the right, and you peel out a piece, which is the white. This is a character up in the sky, a male character, and he, he is overlooking a female character, a house, and a baby being born. So it's called Wellwater. You can see that the female character is holding a pitcher. And the pitcher is direct, the spout is directly over a well. A well water, it's a very uh, highly personal, all of my prints are, but during this period, Charmaine and I were having babies, and babies were being born in, in our system of order. And we lived in the country, we lived... Uh, by a lake we lived where there were moons and birds and and trees and bushes and flowers and uh, axes and needles and sewing and very complicated uh, yet very spiritual print the next print is called two ways two ways man 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 um, if there are two people there are two ways and I dare say it merely makes no difference how much in love you are, how compatible you are, how you uh, want things to be uh, loving between you and that other person. In this case, I'm speaking specifically of Charmaine and I, who sometimes had very serious disagreements this is about a disagreement. You know, it's called two ways, two ways of doing something. 
Um, I have said before that Charmaine and I can actually argue over what we agree on, much less what we don't agree on. So she brings me roses and I bring her a house. You know, she has roses in one hand and she has a knife in the other. I have a house in one hand and I have a knife in the other. Two different kinds of knives. Hers is like a kitchen knife. Mine is like a butcher knife. Um, it's pretty amazing. I wrote a poem once about the scars on the back of my hand that was made from being whipped with long stem roses. And that's a bit on the cynical side of life, but I think that those scars come with a um, relationship. Uh, this one is called Tomorrow. Tomorrow is the skeletal reality of a human. And from inside this human's brain, there's a vision being cast. And I would, I call that vision tomorrow. It's future. It's, it is what is in the future. And what is in the future is something of the well water experience. If there's a lake, there's a, there, there's a reeds, uh, there's water birds, there's a moon, there's a spiral, there's angles, there's stairways and growth patterns. And he's casting it. And what is cast outside comes from inside. It's called tomorrow. It's huge. This print is like almost seven feet tall. And again, about three foot wide. Um, very dynamic in, in all of its, all of its glory. It's me. It is me casting a vision. This one's called Through It All. Man, 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 through it all is like a kind of the son of, if you will, cut hand, hurt eyes. It was made with a chisel walking a chisel across a board. It's a big woodcut. It's carved with, cut with, uh, basically it's all cut with a mat knife or box blade, box cutter, if you will. But um, it's, a, it's a whirling uh, dervish kind of of, Eyes and knives and scars and uh, could be considered brutal in a lot of ways. There were only like 10 of these things made. Uh, I, I still have a couple of them in a print drawer. Uh, but they're big. They're four foot by eight foot. They were made on a full four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood and man printing this thing was a nightmare uh the we had to lift the paper before it when it went through the roller because it was pushed it's very very heavily embossed this one's called in order in order in order of in order to uh how do you how do you uh, bring about an order? What kind of pattern is developed in order? These are like bird's heads that spiral outward. I think any growth pattern, organic growth pattern, comes from the inside out. And that, of course, is what this is doing. Uh, it's very, very simple. I don't 
there's no way I can erase in here. I can't go back and fix something. It either is cut right the first time or it's wrong. And I just don't accept any kind of reality of it being wrong. I accept the reality of my cut from my hand on my block of wood and or linoleum is, is right. I don't think I make mistakes in these things. I just, they are what they are. And there's, there's really no room for fixing anything if you screw up. This one is called In Hand. In Hand is a linoleum cut as well, and it's like 48, 50 inches tall by close to th probably three foot wide. And again, it's cut with, uh, it's just cut with a razor, sharp uh, box blade. And again, I lay the linoleum out in the sun. I let it heat so it's soft. And when it is soft, it cuts like butter. It cuts really easy. It's in a universal kind of uh, spiraling atmosphere of growth and vision and explos explosive expansion. Uh, and the hand is really clean. There's nothing in the hand, but therefore I named it in hand. I love these prints. I love doing them. They were really, really fun to make. They like my drawings even. They're one-shot deals. I sat down, I start, and I just go until they're done. And I, I don't know. It's a kind of a remarkable way to work. Uh, this one's made during the same period. This one's called Every Baby. Every Baby was a spiraling outward growth. Um, I put the baby in at last. I drew all of the spiraling uh, antenna kind of cross esque patterns, very rick racky uh, kind of expanding lines. And then I just put the baby in it. And originally I thought about putting the center of the spiral in the center of the baby's head, but that pushed the baby back into the distance. And I wanted to bring the baby out very much out front to have a dominant kind of place within the context of the, of the work of art. So I put the heart, uh, I put the, the center of the spiral where the heart of the baby would be. So this is called Every Baby. We were, again, Charmaine and I were having children during this time and they were babies and little kids and you know tricycles all over the studio and little wagons and barbie dolls they were all girls we had a house full of girls and every baby was born out of that atmospheric condition or pressure Uh, this one's called Eye to Eye. This one's very much like the earlier piece, except that the two characters are backed off of each other. In the brain of the male is an axe, and the handle of the axe becomes a tied knot. Uh, in the back of the, the male's head is the house, and then... Over on the other side, looking eye to eye with me is Charmaine. And in Charmaine's, in the center of her head, uh, is the same kind of uh, drawing, the rick-rack drawing with the 
antenna type crosses on it. Uh, that's where every baby comes from. And then there are stars and moons and constellations and that's what all those dots are, they're worlds. So there's a house at the end of her spiral and a house at the end of my spiral. I love doing this. I mean, I just absolutely love drawing this. They were so personal and so meaningful in my life that, you know, it's kind of hard for me to think of other people uh, having them other than I feel like if they're applicable to me, they'll be applicable to her and to other people. Now, this one, on the other hand, is very much out of the tradition of cut hand, hurt eyes. This one's called he, 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 H-E, three times, he, 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 in sort of a cynical, laughing way. This is a male um, where the male, good gracious me alive, man, I'm telling you, having, having seven daughters, I can tell you that I've had some real run-ins with the psychological nature of the male. Um, sometimes they're very domineering. Sometimes they're very much the bully. My girls would get off the school bus and tell me what was said on the school bus and how they were treated on the school bus and what boys said to them on the playground. And it just drove me nuts. Uh, you know, I am a male, so I, I and I like being a male. But this character's got spurs. He's like a rooster. You know, his uh, penis is, in essence, the same as the spur. You know, it's the dominant part of the he, he, he in this world where he's centered on what you would call the North Star, and the universe spirals around him. Um, this one's called Both of Us. Both of Us. That insinuates there's two in here. There's two... Two and two different people. So if you look at the very center where the head of this character is, there's two heads in there. One is uh, very much like the funnel from the universe. Uh, it's like tomorrow. Uh, the whole idea of the, the, the diamond, the tetrahedon kind of form gives a very cool and calculated and very intellectual kind of approach to dealing with something that also by definition then is dealt with in a very emotional way. And so there's, there's a paradox. There's two different things at play there. One is an emotional character and one is an intellectual character. And I think we by nature, humans by nature, male or female, are, I think they're both at the same time. I think those, both, of, both of those elements are in us. This one's called to have and to hold. To have and to hold, to have and to hold. So this is uh, almost like a Merlin character where the headdress becomes the beginning and the end of a figure eight that starts that kind of uh, figure eight nature uh, coming from a center. I use that center in, in a lot of my drawings, the three, three eyes, uh, the funnel coming down as part of the face, the diamond or tetrahedon being as part of the, you would call that the beard. It's the beard of the character. So this, to tell you the truth, is like 
me as Merlin, me as Merlin, Merlin being the one who could cast a vision. And this is the vision caster here. I love these prints. I love making these prints. This covers about a six or seven or eight year maybe period of my life, which probably will not be duplicated in that in as much as I'm not even really doing woodcuts anymore. <laughs> 